Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing okay. Uh, just as a continued announcement, we continue to do drive-in church. Uh, and if you can let other people know that around you as well, so that way, I mean, it's the most non-committal thing ever. You can come in in your vehicle, there, you're spread apart by eight feet from anyone else, you can listen, and then you can go. And so it's a great way, even if you're like, I don't know, maybe wanting to test out a church or maybe hear a service for the very first time. It's very non-committal. So feel free to invite your friends. <laughs> feel free to let you know the word know. And as we continue on with what the world is going through, uh, we'll continue to do online services, the drive-in. And if we ever get the opportunity to open up the sanctuary, we'll be doing that as well. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to reach you. Uh, in the same way, uh, if you're going through anything or you just like to talk, feel free to reach me as well. Um, I've been here barely two months when Corona happened, so I don't know you guys all that well. I haven't had a chance to spend some good time with you guys, so feel free to call me and let, let's connect sometime. So we've been covering, uh, I wanted to be covering obedience as a characteristic of God, of Christ, that he was even obedient to the Father. And so we fell into this three-week process of talking about disobedience and what that looks like and how important it is to be obedient. And today, instead of focusing on all the, you know, the bad stuff that happens when you're disobedient to God, I wanted to focus on the good stuff about being obedient to God uh, and, one co and what comes out of that. Sorry. And uh, so I just wrote down some overheads, if you're taking notes, if you will. I wrote down just that obedience means truth. Um, and what I mean is that it begins to change your worldview, that what truth is, is not necessarily the way we view the world, but it is the way that God views the world and the rules he has set into motion. And so uh, it changes the way you view the world. That obedience does come with blessings and rewards, and we'll talk about a bunch of those. Um, that obedience is also a form of worship to God and how important that is. And then, of course, fellowship and really want to talk about fellowship because it's our relationship with God. And when we truly believe and are obedient, the Bible says that then we become children of God um, and we enter into this relationship. And I like that it says children, because when I think of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, uh, they didn't... <clears throat> They relied on God for everything, for food, for teaching them about seasons and the sun going up and then going down. And um, He taught them about everything about life. And so being obedient to God, we re-enter into that relationship where we depend on God, on everything. And we enjoy a fellowship throughout life. So I'll shoot you uh, a bunch of verses here that talk about this fellowship that we have in God and how beautiful it is. Um, I'm going through First uh, John and uh, for homework, if you want to read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, now for the record, it's very short. So don't feel like I'm giving you like this giant armada of things to read, uh, especially 1st <laughs> John uh, or 2nd John. 2nd John is just like a little paragraph. So it's an easy read. Uh, read it as it talks about our relationship and fellowship uh, with God. And so 1st um, John 1, 7 says this, if we are living in the light, just as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So I like how it talks about that there's this cleaning, and then we enter into this relationship with the person who is light. Um, I find that significant because elsewhere in the Bible, it talks about how, like, you shouldn't, but have you ever looked at the sun? <laughs> you consider it bright. And it says that when, when God returns, his brightness makes the sun go away. Like it, it's so piercing, it is so beyond anything that we may think of as bright. Uh, it is completely, and when you think of trying to describe what the sun is like and you're like, it's warm, it's radiant, um, you know, it, it it's enveloping, 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 <laughs> uh, like it covers all of you. When, when you apply that times like a million and that's who God is and you think of the radiance and the warmth and the enveloping and all of that like right so as god is in the light then we become part of that light part of who he is and we enter into this fellowship first john 2 says this if someone claims i know god but doesn't obey god's commandments that person is a liar not living in truth but those who obey god's word truly show how completely they love him and that is how we know that we're living in him 
Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. So it talks about this marked difference that when you enter into relationship with God, that you imitate the one that you love. You imitate God a little bit more. And then, of course, God loves people, and so you end up loving other people as well. 1 John chapter 2, 24 says this, So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the very beginnings. It's always talking about this obedience as a precursor to this relationship. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life that he promised. 1 John 3, 24, Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him, and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit that he gave us lives in us. So again, we, the first part of obedience is entering into this beautiful and incredible relationship with God um, that begins a marked journey in our lives, that we're not in it alone anymore. They, we have someone who cares about the decisions that we make and is right there with us, that when we suffer, he's there hurting right along with us, that when we're joyful, he's happy for us. Like, it's this togetherness, it's this fellowship. And it's not just for this life, but it's for all of eternity that we get to enjoy it. And so we should be practicing it here and now, of course. Obedience um, is also worship unto God, right? That when God asks you to do something, and it's not like we talked about delayed obedience or partial obedience or doing our own thing. When we're completely obedient to God, right? That what we're doing, we're doing out of joy. Not that he's some kind of slave master who gives us all these rules to live by, but it's it's this marked joy in our lives. It, it's good to do what God is asking us to do because, again, we're living in this dependency and fellowship with God. And so when we're obedient, it's worship. It's loving on the one who created everything. And of course, all of that belongs to him. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly a way to worship him. Romans 12, starting in uh, verse 1. Uh, so, obedience to God is also a form of worshiping God, of loving who he is and what he has done. Okay, so I bet a lot of you are just sitting there being like, okay, so what about the rewards? <laughs> what about the blessings? What comes with being obedient to God? We talked about all the scary stuff that happens, the separation and the, you know, just how, how crazy that looks like being rebellious against God and, and what, like, it means death, right? And, and so what comes with, like, you know, we talk about eternity. Is that it? Is that all we have to look forward to? And so let's let's get into this because the Bible does say a bunch of stuff uh, that happens now uh, because of our continued obedience to God. So my first and one of my favorites is like even in the Ten Commandments, when you read about honoring your father and your mother, it really coincides that with a long life, right? It, it's kind of like this promise that it's like, you know, honor your father and mother and it'll go well with you. And it's not just to that, but it's in obedience to God as well. And so if you look at the original in Deuteronomy uh, 32, starting in 46, it says, Take to heart all the words of warning that I've given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children so that they will obey every word of these instructions. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land that you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. Now, it's not just there in the Bible that talks about this long life um, as you follow and chase after God. Even in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Now, some people look at that and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Long life. Do I really want a long life on earth? Isn't it like the earth horrible? No, don't forget that God as a gift has given you your life. And when you are in fellowship with him, when you are at peace uh, with everything around you because of your relationship with God, that it's not a bad thing. It, it's this beautiful blessing and journey that you get to walk in and grow with God. And so a long life is a blessing <laughs> because you're living it with, with your father in heaven. Um, 
Throughout all of this, we've also talked about protection and how when we're disobedient, God just removes his protection and, and the calamity that comes upon us when, when we live like that. Uh, but one of the blessings or one of the rewards, if you will, in being obedient is that you have God's complete protection. Now, if you ask the question, well, does that mean nothing bad's ever going to happen to me? No, because it says that he will work all things going accord, like all things for your good and according to his will. And so... Um, as he helps you to grow as a person and mature in faith, um, there might be trials and tribulations. I mean, when you represent the light, the darkness comes against you. It's just, it's just how it works, right? Um, but even through that, it'll help you to depend more, grow closer to God, and it works together for your good. It's not just evil destroying you. It's God protecting you and helping you to grow. And so there is a certain protection that that comes with, with being with God. So uh, Ecclesiastes 8.5, those who obey him will not be punished. Says it right there, right? You receive no punishment from that. You receive no punishment at the end because you've been obedient to God. You've been obedient in your confession. You've been trying to grow close to God. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to be like his son. Sound familiar? We just read stuff like that, right? So that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him, who are obedient to him um, and are called according to his purpose. So he guides us into all things. And part of that may be uh, growing a little bit of a thicker skin so that you can reach other people. Now, don't forget that the reason why we don't go to heaven instantly once we start to believe uh, is because we have work to do while we're here. And he has use of us to begin to change the world around us through his love. Okay, here's another one. And, and this one is... This one's awesome because so one of the rewards of being obedient to, to God is gladness, is joyfulness, is, you know, because you, you've entered into this fellowship, there's this joy that comes with it. Um, I think of Nehemiah. And when you read, sorry, I lost my place here. Uh, gladness. Nehemiah. When you read Nehemiah chapter 8, it talks about how they begin to really listen to God and to read all the rules that they're supposed to be following it so that they can do the best they could. And they realize that the festival they're about to enter into, that part of what part of the obedience that they need to do is to build these straw huts, uh, these shelters for the duration of the festival. And so they, they go and they do it, and uh, they're obedient in that. Sorry, lost my place here. And so um, there it is. So everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters during the festival, and they were all filled with great joy. Now, this is preceding them being obedient, them seeking to please God. So they were reading everything that they needed to do, and they're like, no, no, we're going to do the best that we can, right? So everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters during the festival, and they were filled with with great joy. The Israelites had not celebrated like this since the days of Joshua, son of Nun. So there it is. They, they hadn't celebrated like that because they hadn't been obedient like that. And now that they re-entered into this beautiful fellowship with God and they were obedient and they listened to what he had to say, they entered into this incredible joy and celebration and everything around them changed. There, there was something from deep inside. Uh, if you read Acts chapter 2, and I'm reading from 42, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in the homes for the Lord's Supper, and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I love this because there they are truly devoting themselves to knowing God more. And so they're being taught and they're enjoying fellowship with each other and they're sharing with each other. And, and then it talks about how their numbers grew every day because they had this gladness, they had this joy inside of them uh, and they enjoyed time together that the outside world was looking at this and be like, 
I want to be part of this party. <laughs> you guys are so happy. You're so like, and so the outside world was in awe of what was going on and they would come in and they would begin to learn about Christ and what he has done. And they began to be taught and they began to experience the joyness and gladness. And so they began to grow because of this, because people entered into this fellowship with God and there was just this overwhelming joy. And so part of the blessing of being completely obedient to God is having a joy of having just the sense that God is always with you and it's and it's good that everything he has given you is good. Psalms 119. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil. They do not walk on his paths. You you have charges to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my action would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. And I love that. It's like such a a prayer from David. So Psalm 119, it's like, I'm going to listen. I'm going to search for you. I'm going to obey and and help me to, (laughs) to be glad in that. Don't give up on me. Help me to enjoy um, your presence and being with you. And it just talks about uh, joyful are people of integrity and marking uh, the change in your life about not dabbling with sin and destruction and death, but chasing after God with all of your heart. And it brings about this joyness. One of the other promises is great peace. And... uh, I don't know if you've ever been afraid. Have you ever lived or been in a moment where this this fear just completely overcomes you? And it's like, you know, that doesn't come from God because peace comes from God. And when you know him, when you truly get to know him, you live a life marked in peace. And even when the world around you is crumbling, is, is shaking, is scary for maybe other people, you can sit in, in this knowing who God is and that he's always got all things under control. And this overwhelming peace just takes hold of your heart, right? Psalm 119, same Psalm we were reading, okay, 165. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. And so again, think of just living life without fear, that God is always in control of all things. One of the other blessings and rewards that we get, I'm giving you a big list, hope you're taking notes, is having the assurance of salvation, right? And when you, like I said for homework, read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, okay? Um, It really talks about how you can confidently approach God because you've lived a life chasing after him, that you don't need to have shame. Because if you had shame, it means that you were doing things you weren't supposed to be doing, right? But that you can confidently approach and be like, this is what I've been waiting for, this eagerness, right? And so there's this assurance of salvation. Um, 1 John 3, 19, our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with boldness, bold confidence, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. 1 John 2, 28, and now dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you'll be full of courage and do not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. Now, part of that same verse (laughs) that says you can ask for God uh, from anything, right? Um, So so sorry, 1 John 3, starting in 19, um, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him. So one of the other rewards is answer to prayers. Is, is that when you have that fellowship and relationship with God that you can just talk to him and say, God, can you, you know, um, now take in consideration that that comes from a place not of selfishness, not of, dear God, I would love a Ferrari. <laughs> you know, uh, that what happens is when you're completely in love with God, that your will, as you're looking a little bit more like Christ, right, begins to align with his. And, and so when you ask for things in him that, are already part of his will, they begin to happen because you're asking. And and he's like rewarding and it's happening. It's not about getting what you want, but it's about serving him and how he 
begins to change the world around you because of that. And so you get answers to prayer. Like, that's, that's pretty awesome. It's not a one-way conversation. It's not just talking to God and, and you know, hoping God hears you. It's a two-way conversation. God begins to respond in your life. Um, not just like responding to prayer, but you'll see, you'll see God in everything. You know, you'll see his handiwork at work everywhere. And you'll see that he is always there. And now that you're paying attention for it, um, you see him in all things. Um, and, and it's beautiful. Okay. Um, finally, uh, the conscious presence of Christ. And so this ties right into the answering of prayer thing. Okay. Um, so uh, John chapter 14, verse 21 says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them. And I will love them. And you want to pay attention to this word, okay? And reveal myself to each of them. So there's this idea that God is already present with us. He lives inside of us. We've covered that through like first, second, and third John, okay? Um, it'll talk a lot about it in there, that he's living inside of us, that we enjoy this fellowship and relationship. And then here it says, but there's this revealing aspect when you love God, that he shows himself. He, Like I said, you get to see his handiwork. You see him at work. You can, you can begin to see in the spirit world, right? And be like, whoa, what is happening here? God has his hand all over it. And you can see him at work. He begins to reveal who he is to you. And again, it, it becomes a two-way communication, right? So he shows himself. And how powerful and beautiful uh, is that? Okay, now there, there's even more blessings, okay? Um, when you think of when God promises Abraham and this promises continues, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me, as he talks to Abraham. Jesus replied, this is Luke eleven twenty eight. but even more blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. So it talks about these blessings, right? So there's this kind of rewards, and then there's these blessings that God begins to show his favor over you, right? It's like, ah, oh, there's someone. <laughs> there's someone who knows me. Child of God, this is one of my children who loves to listen, who loves to obey, who loves, who loves me. And he blesses and protects, and, and like there, there's so much more that comes to it. James 1, to 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at yourself in the mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and you forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So there's more. You gain God's favor. You, you catch his eyeball, and, and he begins to bless you in life uh, in lots of ways. So we're talking about not just eternal life, but a living relationship with him here on earth where he's part of everything that you go through. And how beautiful is that? Finally, and this is before we get into truth, so there's the blessing of holy living that he kind of gave us, you know, a manuscript. <laughs> he, that when you begin to know him, that your life begins to change as in um, you begin this process of what's called sanctification, of chasing after what's good. And it's a process. It doesn't mean you're perfect instantly, right? It's a process of trying to get to know who he is, trying to be more and more obedient, trying to learn his will. Um, and we get to enjoy holy living with him, right? That in, in our attempt, in our honest love for God, everything else is taken care of, right? That in Adam and Eve's before the fall, in their complete dependence on God, even if something had happened, right, they weren't at fault at all. There was nothing there because they were truly living holy, completely dependent on God, uh, spending time with him. And so the Holy Spirit truly begins to change who we are, the way we think, the way we feel, all of it, as we continue to be dependent and obedient to God. Okay, now I wanted to cover this idea of truth. And because uh, there's the idea of, you know, um, there's like absolute truth and then there's like relative truth. What's true for me may not be true for you. My favorite color is blue. That may not be true for you, uh, right? And so we look at all this idea of truth. But here, when I speak of truth, I, I think of the way you view the world, right? The, the rules that govern your worldview, right? 
And so some people are like, everyone's out to hurt me. That's a rule in their life. And therefore I must protect myself. And, and you know, they, they, that's the way they view the world. And so they govern themselves according to that. But when y- you love God, <laughs> he begins to give you absolute truth, his truth and his worldview along with it. And you begin to see that you are in like spiritual battle all the time. And every decision that you make, that everyone makes matters immensely. And so truth becomes a part of everything that you do uh, because it is who God is. And he begins to reveal to you, like I said, his handiwork, what's going on in the world around you, uh, what God is up to. And it changes the way you think. It changes the way you view the world because it's not about you anymore. It's about taking every opportunity to love God, to bring honor and glory to him, to help bring other people to him so that they can begin to have fellowship with them. And, And what's important or what used to be important just isn't important anymore. Because God has given you truth and you're looking forward to, to an eternity. 1 John 2, 26. I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Holy Spirit teaches everything that you need to know. And what he te- teaches is truth. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. You can see the theme here, right? 1 John 3, 18, dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. And so there's that idea again, that your worldview has changed and therefore your actions have all begun to change. And people can see that marked difference in you and they say, well, what's different about this person? It's like, no, God has made a difference. And so God is having an effect in everything that they touch, in everything that they do. And uh, again, it talks about that confidence when you stand before God because you've been living a life of truth, a life through the eyes of God, viewing the world the way he sees it and not so much stuck up about the things that we want to hold on to, right? Uh, That the material things of this world and what the world wants you to focus on, right? It's like, go to school, uh, get a good job, marry, have children, get a good house, have, you know, and, and, and accumulating possession and status and fame. And, you know, all that is just, you realize that it's all false, that it's all meaningless. And you want to live according to God's worldview of truth, of love, of everything based in that love. So as you can see, there's a lot that comes from when you're obedient, right? you begin to live in a totally different worldview. You get to experience blessings and rewards. When you live in obedience, what you do is worship unto God. And for me, one of the most important is you get to enjoy a fellowship with God where he responds to you, where he's active in your life. Uh, And everything, everything begins to change because you're now not living for yourself anymore. You're living for God. Remember the very one of the first passages that says, you know, it, you be you should be living as Christ, so that He's the first of many brothers and sisters. That we begin to imitate Him and live a life as He had, one of sacrifice and love, and teaching other people about love. So, I hope that's encouraging. I hope that's encouraging. So you're like got long life to look forward to. You have great fellowship to look forward to, great worship to look forward to, viewing the world entirely different, valuing people differently. Everything, everything has changed. (laughs) And so my prayer is is that you truly seek out God's will uh, and are obedient to it, that you're not reluctant. Maybe, Maybe if we start like that because we're sinful, you know, that we stop that. And we chase after who God is completely with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, that we begin to love him and try to hear him out because it just, it changes everything about life. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, help us to hear your voice, Lord. Help us not harden our hearts and and ignore you and hear your voice. Be like, nope, nope, don't want to. (laughs) But let us hear your voice and be obedient to you, God. And may we begin to see the fruits of that, that as we chase after who you are, that there's this incredible joy and gladness and worship and and deep sense of love and peace. And (laughs) there's so much that goes with it, God. So I just pray, Lord, that you help us to hear your will and not shrink back from it, God, but walk confidently in what you have set out for us to do, Lord. May we hear you, chase after you, 
and be completely obedient to you, Lord. And then when everything around us begins to change and people ask, how, how is it that your life is so markedly different that we can easily say, because I have fellowship with God because I get to know him as a best friend, as a dad, because when I struggle, I know he's working things together for me, that he's a part of my entire journey, and I look forward to an eternity with him, but I also look forward to a relationship with here on earth. May it inspire the people around us, God. God, continue to give us opportunity to show the people around us, and not just say about who you are, but show them who you are, so that they can begin to question and know you through our passionate love. Uh, for you, God. May your love be made perfect in those moments, even to them. Father God, give us boldness. Give us great courage, God, to chase after who you are. I thank you, Lord, for your continued presence and your continued calling on our lives, God, that so long as we have breath here, that you are calling on us, God, back to you, God. May we feel that ever stronger in our hearts. God, continue to protect your people. Show them your mercy, your grace, your love, and open up your arms. And may, may they be truly begin to feel you, not just this week, but for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. I uh, pray you have a fantastic week. And I guess I'll, you'll see me. <laughs> you'll see me. Uh, you can comment and then I may read you. Uh, but hopefully we can continue to have some fellowship as well um, in the weeks to come. God bless you, everyone. Have a